Good morning, everybody. Well, here we are. We are uh, here in Austria, just one country, a small Slovakia, away from the border of Ukraine. And war is raging. And in Germany and in Austria, uh, the COVID cases are probably at an all-time high right now. And so here we are. What do we do? Jesus and his disciples were living in an occupied territory. It was peaceful, uh, but it was peaceful only because of the terror, uh, of the fear of the Romans. And Jesus and his disciples were together, and what do they do? What it, Luke records, the disciples asking Jesus, how do we pray? They had seen Jesus praying to his father, and they said, okay, Jesus, teach us how to do that too. And in Matthew's version, um, Jesus says, this then is how to pray. So what we are going to do now is look at how to pray the Lord's Prayer in time of Europe's biggest war in 80 years. And Jesus says, begin this way. Our Father in heaven. Now, I used to skip over this part, thinking our Father in heaven was something like, oh, dear God, you know, dear God, and then begin the prayer. But since then, I've learned that Jesus chose his words very carefully. So, our, what does that mean? Um, I've learned and I've come to believe and accept that it means that it's not just me praying for myself. I am part of a group. I am part of you. I am part of SICC Church. I'm part of a family. I'm here in Europe among Austrians, among Europeans, and among Ukrainians and Russians. And there's a we of which I am a part. And my job, I think, at the beginning is to be able to imagine that big picture, not just me alone, but me connected to all of these people, all of this world, which God loves so much. It is me praying insofar as I am part of an us that is way bigger than me, than Father. Um, what do you think of when you think of Father? Some of you had a Father who's very cuddly and warm, and others of you had a father uh, whose your first memory of him is his taking out the belt and whacking you. Um, but God, Jesus uses the word Abba. The word Abba means dad, daddy, father. Um, a God who loves the entire world and everything and everyone in it. The God who said in the Old Testament, I have loved you with an everlasting love. So I imagine God looking at Russia and Ukraine, battling it out, and us in other battles too. Um, just like Jesus in Matthew 23 was giving all these woes. Uh, you're in trouble if you do this. You're in trouble if you do that. And at the end of the seven or eight woes, Jesus said this. He said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. He could be saying, oh, Ukraine and Russia. How, I, how often I yearned to gather you under my wings, but you wouldn't listen. That's the heart of the Father, our Father in heaven. Heaven, partly to understand this, is God's space. It's out there. That's where God, the ruler of the universe, in control of all things, exists and from where he rules. But in another way, if I understand heaven correctly, from the way they understood it in the first century, heaven is a dimension. Heaven is in many ways as close to us as the air we breathe. Our Father, the, the King of the universe, right here beside us, Jesus saying, I am with you always. So now we've begun the prayer that way. We've addressed God, who is our Father, all-powerful, oversees all things, and right here. And now we begin our request. And the first request is so beautiful. Hallowed be thy name. Lord, we are in the Lord world right now. COVID is peaking. Kingdoms in conflict. Liberals against conservatives. Christians against Christians. 
people dying, people afraid. Lord, may your name, your goodness, your love, I love this phrase, life-giving, may your life-giving spirit be present in the worst of times. May people think, oh, there he is. There's God. May you be honored. May your love and your presence be experienced. I love the, uh, the, I think it's a remarkable song. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Flow, river, flow. Let the rivers of life flow. And we'll sing that at the end of this message. But that is the prayer. Lord, hallowed be your name by the people of the world. Well, then we ask, thy kingdom come. A uh, big part of me wants Ukraine to win. Wants that kingdom to defeat the kingdom of Russia. But that's not the kind of kingdom uh, that is God, where we win by shooting each other. Uh, we pray that God's bigger kingdom prevail, where lives are given in saving lives, not taking lives, where life reigns instead of death, where love, peace, patience, caring about others more than ourselves, um, where we become a living sacrifice for you, Lord, that's what we pray for. Uh, where we fight our enemies when we have to, only with regret, asking forgiveness as a last resort, and we admit, yes, there's evil in the world, and this is the best we can do, Lord. Uh, and that, but, Lord, may we be more like a, a virus of goodness that infects others around us uh, who are in conflict. And then we pray your will be, or be done. Uh, years ago, I was part of a church that had uh, signs made. Lord, I am willing. They were transparent, translucent, whatever. We'd stick them to the uh, windows of our cars. And as I drove around then and saw other cars with that sign on it, Lord, I am willing, I thought to myself, that's a beautiful thing. It's the highest prayer in the entire Bible. When we don't want to engage in the hard thing about bringing in God's kingdom, um, we remember Jesus who said, I don't want to go to the cross three times. And finally he said, uh, Lord, not thy will, not, not my will, but thy will uh, be done. Lord, put me in the middle. Put me into the fray. Bring me as, as a kingdom of God bringer to earth. And then on earth as in heaven, there's, a, there's a, a, a wrong view of Christianity out there that says, I just want to escape this world because this is all going to be gone forever. Uh, no, God says, thy kingdom come to earth. Lord, let me be a builder of your kingdom come in whatever way you want me to be. So now we have the big picture. We address our Father in heaven. And he is building his kingdom on earth, and we say yes, and he is enlisting us to uh, be peacemakers, build his kingdom. Now, there's a question that a lot of people ask. If God is so powerful, why doesn't he just come down and end the war himself? The re answer is, beginning in Genesis, ending with Revelation, that's not how God has chosen to bring his kingdom to earth. He doesn't just zap it into being. He chooses people who are willing to join him as his partners in building a flourishing, good world and defeating the works of the devil. And so that's why, Lord, if that's your plan, we pray this. Give us, us, all of us, our daily bread, all the daily things I need, food, shelter, wisdom, courage, willingness, to be uncomfortable, energy uh, for today. I, I may not have enough for, I don't know about tomorrow, but Lord, give me what I need today and let me be grateful for what I have today. Make me not a hoarder, but a sharer of your grace. And Lord, um, I trust your provisions for tomorrow. One of the interesting things Jesus said about his bread, he said, I have bread that you have no knowledge of. 
My bread is to do the will of my Father in heaven. He is energized. He is fed. He comes alive in doing God's will. You felt that yourself. When you've been in the middle of doing something important for God, you felt alive. I, I want to read to you um, a Facebook post from Chris Trevathan. He's from Texas, moved here three years ago to Austria. He's the Young Life Director here in Austria. And uh, he made a delivery to Ukraine of goods from here in Salzburg. Let me read it to you. He thanks everybody's generosity. Then he says, we pulled an all-nighter for a supply run last night because we found out about churches that were running out of food. They are feeding refugees from a poor village who have literally nothing and nowhere to go. So it felt like a strange scene out of a movie. Out of a movie. We crossed the Ukraine border at 4 a.m. to avoid long lines of traffic. Didn't want to wake people up before 6, so we pulled over to the side of the road, take an hour-long nap. Not the smartest move in a war zone. About 15 minutes after we parked, two soldiers with long guns came out of the forest, walked up to the front of our van. They didn't have the yellow armband, so we didn't know if they were Russian or Ukrainian. Um, they looked at us, walked past us. My co-pilot went to sleep, but not me. A little further down the road, we pulled into a military checkpoint. Five soldiers were around the fire. They stopped us. One soldier asked me to get out of the car, lift up the back door, didn't speak any English, but he had my passport, and he kept pointing aggressively to the car. And I said, sorry, sir, I don't know uh, Ukrainian. So he swung his rifle around and said with a big smile on his face, you got any of these? I said, no, sorry, maybe next time. I guess he thought a big Texan might be uh, on a dirt road uh, with a rifle enforcement. So our drop-off point was on a dirt road, dilapidated neighborhood, drove down a dark alley, and then a van pulled up behind us, flashed its lights, three guys stepped out, started walking to the back of our van, my co-pilot rolled down his window, asked in Polish what they needed, and ended up being the three men who were sent to pick up the food. Before I left, I said, my friends, and family who paid for this food want you to know that you are loved, you are seen, and you matter. And we are the light, we are in this fight with you. They were so grateful. They were even able to bring them 20 loaves of fresh bread. They couldn't believe it, held the bread to their noses, and said they're not sure when the last time was they were able to eat fresh bread. Well, my bread, says Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me. Uh, and Chris Trevathan experienced that. But we also, we also pray uh, for God to provide the bread to the poor teenagers in Russian uniforms who are being slaughtered. How do you pray that, that God cares about them? Uh, give the leaders of Russia wisdom and courage the bread of, of wisdom to bring peace, not death, including the Russian Orthodox Church leaders. And forgive us our sins, our debts, our trespasses. So many of us have sins that contributed to wrongdoing in so many ways to, to the pain of others that we, we're not even aware of. Our own selfishness, refusal to share, our hate of enemies, our wanting revenge, our delighting in the enemy getting theirs. Lord, drive this out of us, please. And Lord, when we get self-righteous, the sin of self-righteousness, as if, as if we're above all of that kind of thing, convict us. Help us to see you on the cross paying for our sin. And Lord, as we forgive those who sin against us, Wow, how do we do that? Lord, I can't do this on my own. You, on the cross, said, Father, forgive them. 
They don't know what they're doing. And that seems so unthinkable. It's so easy to hate Putin and want him taken out. But Lord, I'm guessing you look at uh, Vladimir Putin just like you looked at Manasseh in the Old Testament who undid everything that his father Hezekiah had done, who shed innocent blood, turned it into a ritual. And I'm wondering, Manasseh, who repented and came back to you, maybe we look at Putin, who's undone everything since 1990 and uh, has shedding innocent blood. But Lord, you want even him to come to repentance and salvation. And Lord, lead us not into, into temptation. The temptation to think we can fix things without you. The temptation to escalate, to blame, to be discouraged. To be self-righteous, give us the humility and strength to face what you allow to come to us. And finally, deliver us, Lord, from the evil one. This is so hard. We in the modern world think we're so sophisticated. We don't believe in a little red devil running around in red tights with a, uh, a, a, a whatever, a sword or something, pitch, pitchfork. But we are so prone to see people as evil. Lord, show us. Show us the reality that you have come to defeat the works of the devil and that our battle is not against people, even though it ends up that way, unfortunately, but it's against the works of the evil power that co-opts people into his destructive ways. Lord, we pray that evil get no foothold in our lives, prevent us, Lord, from being co-opted by the evil one. So, Lord, today we pray, as you taught us to pray, the big picture, hallowed be thy name. For thine is the kingdom, Lord, and the power and the glory forever and ever. And now, Lord, hear us as we pray, hallowed be thy name, through this remarkable song, that is indeed a prayer for the nations. Oh, we pray all of this, Lord, in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. Let's continue to sing and worship God.